it has been way too long since we've had this rocket of a man on this show. This is Jeremy Dewar. He knows all things MSU hockey. He picks up for what I lack in knowledge of the game. Jeremy, thank you so much for joining us ahead of a massive, massive game for our Icy Spartans. How are we doing, man? We doing okay? Doing great, man. I, we, we made a habit of doing this right before the Minnesota series. So the superstitious person in me is a little nervous, but we'll wow. uh, we'll find a way to reverse this jinx here. So That is a really good point. Yeah, we did talk between or ahead of both the Minnesota series so far this year. And that series has not gone necessarily the way that us Spartan fans have wanted it to. MSU is 0-4 against Minnesota. They have been outscored 25-6 to in those four games. But that's not... Something to be ashamed of. Look, Minnesota, obviously a wagon of a team. They are 25-8-1 overall, 19-4-1 in conference play. Jeremy, look, uh, MSU is on the outside looking in the NCAA tournament. Is it as simple as it's a win and you're in game, or could a loss even be fine for Michigan State? What, what's the picture looking like here? Uh, I, I mean, yeah, pretty much simply a win and you're in. Um, like a win, a win clinches it. I, I think I've seen, mm-hmm. you know, so to give people a little bit of background, like there is no selection committee. There is just, okay. a, it's, it's called the pairwise, which, you know, maybe like the net in basketball, but they have to follow it to a T. Uh, they, okay. they don't get any uh, subjectivity that they can add into this. So, so uh, right now MSU, I think it's at 16th in the pairwise, um, which 16 teams do get in, but there is one conference that does not have anyone in the top 16. So that auto bid steals a bid. So gotcha. you really got to be top 15 or 14, depending on some uh, conference tournaments and, and any bid steals that come in. So if they win, they jump to 12 is what the numbers have looked like. So that's pretty much safely in. Um, and you know that, if you win this week, the loss that you have maybe in the Big Ten Championship is Michigan or Ohio State, who are also top 10 teams. So you're not okay. going to slide uh, with a loss there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's like win and they're, they're safely in, to be honest. Like they, they pretty much can feel really safe going into the, the final week. Loss, I think I've seen some people say it's, it's possible, but you probably need so many things to break your way. Gotcha. Um, and the other conference tournaments that I would say it's a, it's a remote chance. Um, and again, you'll, you'll know by the following week, like you can look at the pairwise and know if, uh, if they were able to slide up, but, um, but yeah, I think, I think it's going to take a, a win and in. So it's kind of one, one and go here. And with Minnesota as good as they are, and obviously the track record that these two teams have had against each other this year, is, is this looking like a 1980 USA versus Russia? Like, is would it be that big? of an upset this weekend or are the numbers kind of misleading with the goal differential of 25 to six is Michigan state, like actually maybe a little closer than what is appears to be on paper, if you will. Uh, I mean, so it's not 1980. I'll, I'll say it's not. Bad, okay. But I will okay. Say, that's good. That's good. <laughs> uh, I mean, the, the goal differential is pretty fair in a way. Um, I mean, yeah. the Friday night game in Minnesota, like there, we were never in it. And it was one of the worst games we played all year. So that, that was, was tough. Deserved, that was tough. That was a deserved eight nothing <laughs> loss. Um, I will say though, I mean, both both weekends have had uh, one of the games MSU has been in pretty heavy. Like I think they've probably put together about four or five periods out of the twelve that you can say like they outplayed or played even. Um, the okay. difference is you've got to put all three together on the same night. You can't have a third period. You know, I think the, the Munn series, they had a third period where they got a few goals on Minnesota, but they were down 4 nothing at that point. So Minnesota was maybe off the gas a little bit. Sure. Um, but the last time we played them, we were up 2-1 to one halfway through the game. So, like, you know, it's something that as the season has gone on, like they played them four times, and the last game they, last game they played them was probably their best time. <laughs> um, uh, but, you know, I think it's just about pulling together. You, you need to be basically perfect for, for 60 minutes. Um you know, and you're doing it on the road on an ice sheet that's bigger than what you play on. Yeah. Uh, so it's the, I mean, you know, you, you know, like the, how we talk about like football and basketball, like upsets, like you need these certain things to go your way. Like there's like the three things that look like turnovers or they'll get, you know, whatever it is. That's what you need with MSU Saturday. Like you, mm-hmm. Dylan St. Sir needs to have his best night. Minnesota needs to be a little bit off and you have to be extremely disciplined. Uh, like, no penalties. So yeah. <laughs> uh, if they can do that stuff, like they'll be in a position um, where, they, where they can have a shot, but it's, it's a big task. This is a 
solid team with 14 NHL draft picks. So it is oh, what it is. My God. I knew it was a high number. I didn't know it was 14. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I that's one of the, the quirks I love about hockey though, is that like each arena can have a different size sheet of ice. Like I, I just I always find that fascinating. And how how much does that play into the games is that like that massive of a home field advantage to have like the size of ice that you're used to or is that kind of just overblown by casuals like myself uh i mean it might be a little overblown but i will say like it it really messes with you as a defenseman like that's what i okay sure it really messes with you like so basically you know instead of being 200 by 100 it's 200 by 85 is an nhl rink so Mm -hmm. the length is the same uh but you go to minnesota it's 200 by 100 so there's 15 extra feet that you now have on the side so like as a defenseman you might be skating with a forward coming at you and going okay i can be about three feet away my stick will be in the lane and you kind of know how to start squeezing them over to the boards well here you've got another seven and a half feet to get them over to the board. So they just, if they got Fun. the wheel, they just go right around you. Right. So yeah, it really plays on your rushes up the ice and it really plays on your power play. And that's where discipline is huge this weekend because you just have to cover all that extra ground down a man in your zone. So I think, you know, for them, if they can find a way to just slow the Minnesota rush in the neutral zone and get it as ugly and as choppy of a game as it okay. can be, with yeah. discipline that's what they need to do because if this becomes a track meet you it's doing a track meet with extra track <laughs> and they are used to it and you're not um so it's just i think yeah and it, it's hard like for for michigan state this is the only team they play that has an olympic sheet uh wisconsin is a, is also about this size but you okay. know four nights out of the year you play this way and then all 30 other nights including every practice you have at home yeah is different so it, it is an adjustment but you know that's where you gotta lean on your seniors they've played here for four years so they can at least kind of have a feel for it but it, it's a shame the weather hasn't been colder because you could just get up to lake lansing and just practice on a wide open sheet of ice like that's how you condition yourself for olympic ice I like know. hey how about no boards but here we are it's a little too that and, that. yeah and even even the i don't even know what they've been doing for practice so they used to do back in the day is so when we had the summit here in lansing they had an oh olympic yeah sheet. So okay. they would practice on the Olympic sheet the week of Wisconsin or Minnesota. Um, but the summit's closed now. So I don't even I know. know how they, they basically, they don't practice it, uh, it you know, so it's, uh, I'm sure they'll travel maybe Thursday, have a, have a skate Friday, have your morning skate Saturday. Yeah. But that's going to be about it. So. Gotcha. Even I know the summit, I think I've been ice skating eight times in my life and at least five of them have been at the summit. So yeah. I, hey, now look, look at me belonging. There you uh, go. Hockey no conversation. Look, look at me go. Um, so look, I, us, us football fans, us basketball fans, we're all about the hot hand. You know, is there a hot hand in hockey right now? Is there someone for the Spartans that's lighting it up? Maybe it'd be the Notre Dame series, maybe it'd even be before that. Who's Who's been white hot going into this series that we can keep our eye on? Um, I mean, outside of the net, I mean, Dylan Saints here as a goalie is one that you, yeah. you know, has been hot, uh, but he's been hot all season. But I think, you know, scoring wise, it's really been Nico Mueller is, is one to watch. He's the senior from Switzerland, okay. um, kind of having like a breakout season, like always had a ton of potential. He, he played on the U20 team for Switzerland, but just, I think the new staff has really gotten a lot out of him this year. Um, and he's been on a tear. I think he had. You know, he had the empty net goal against Norton. He probably had three or four goals last weekend and a couple assists. That whole line has been has been going. Um, the best thing for them last weekend, though, was really all four lines were were rolling. They might not all have contributed on the stat sheet, but mm-hmm. all four were were rolling really good. So, um, but the one that's been piling points really for the last couple of months is probably Nico Mueller. I think he leads the team in points now, which is amazing because oh, wow. I never would have told you that preseason. He just was one that just kind of felt like a typical Dan Cole recruit where there was a lot of potential and it just was never realized. And you're just kind gotcha. of like, well, yeah, that was unfortunate, but no, this, the senior year has been great. And, and to the point where you start to be like, can we maybe get a fifth year, get a COVID year out of him and, and see what happens. But uh, no, he's one to watch. Uh, Nico is, is definitely one. There we go. Well, Hey, 9 PM Eastern time on big 10 network. Okay. They, they don't have this on, on big 10 network plus, eight uh, on the app like this, <laughs> this is 
this is the show time. We got the prime time slot here. So yep. any final party words before we get you into the weekend here, Jeremy, really appreciate your time All so right. far, but any, any uh, final words here? Final words. So big, big picture. Um, they could get absolutely blown out Saturday and it should not disappoint anyone. Uh, okay. It's this year is so far ahead of schedule <laughs> for where they should be. Like every Seems record like it, they yeah. should be. Um, they've pretty squarely with a lot less talent moved past Penn state and Wisconsin. Uh, they won the season series with Notre Dame outside of just winning the playoffs. They, they won the season series. Um, so, I mean, this is a team that when you can already kind of start to picture, like when the talent actually comes to, to the next mm-hmm. level where the coaching has come up this year, um, like sky's the limit at that point. So uh, it's, a terrible matchup and yeah. you are feeling all the good vibes, but um, you know, the, the hard part of being a hockey fan sometimes is as, as we've had like these little spurts of like the program coming back the last 10 years or whatever, like little blips on the radar is they usually, as soon as like a big loss happens, everyone disappears. <laughs> so yeah, don't sure. disappear on this one. This one is, there's a ton of a uh, reason that Minnesota is good. Minnesota is this year. Um, but this team is way ahead of pace and should, should really have a great summer heading into next year where you can maybe have some expectations. So there we go. Love it. 2025 frozen four with Jeremy Dewar on the staff as well. It's going to be a movie. It is going to be a movie, Jeremy. <laughs> I cannot wait for it, but Hey, this has been awesome, man. Uh, getting us all prepped for the weekend and really just, Hey, coming on here, here and there throughout the season too. What, what a ride it's been for those icy Spartans, man. It's, it's been amazing. So really, really do appreciate it, Jeremy. Um, Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Ah, dude, of course, as always. And gang, we will be chatting what happens in the Big Ten tournament coming up, both for basketball and a little bit of hockey as well coming up this weekend. Uh, until then, hey, go enjoy your weekend. Let's go watch some basketball. Let's go watch some hockey. Let's have fun. Love you all. Go Green.